Hello everyone and welcome to another English Grammar with Max. Today we're going to talk about conditionals. Zero conditional, first conditional and second conditional. Okay, um, let's start with zero conditional. We use zero conditional to describe a fact which is always something which is always or generally true. A general fact. For example, we say if it rains the roads get wet. This is something which is always true, or at least you think it is always true. And remember, in every conditional sentence, we have a condition, or we call this condition or the if clause. We have two clauses, and this clause is called the consequence. So we always have one if clause, or we call it the condition, and one consequence. And remember, if you use the condition or the if clause first and the consequence second, you're gonna have to use a comma in between. But if you use, if you bring the consequence first and then the F clause or the condition clause second, you don't need a comma. For example, we could say the roads get wet if it rains. You don't need a comma between the two sentences. But in here, we do need a comma. In here, in the second example, we do need a comma because the if clause comes first. And remember, there is another thing about the zero conditional. Uh, the tense of the condition is in present simple and the tense of the consequence is also in present simple. So I'll write it here. Present simple and again present simple if we arrive early we get better seats we are saying that whenever we arrive early we get better seats we are not talking about a particular situation we are just stating a fact it means we are not going anywhere right now we are generally speaking uh, one point we could use when or whenever in zero conditional instead of if when you get angry, again, we use the comma because the if clause, but we are not using an if in here. We are using when instead of if, which means the same. When you get angry or whenever you get angry, I get upset. Another point about zero conditional is this. We could use imperative for the consequence. For example, if you don't feel well, this is in present simple, and the consequence after the comma, it's an imperative. It says, if you don't feel well, leave. Okay, let's start with first conditional. We use first conditional to describe a probable consequence for a real situation. Remember, when we talked about zero conditional, we are talking about something which could always be true, or at least you believe it could always be true. We are not facing a real situation, but in the first conditional, we are always facing a real situation. What does that mean? We say, if you don't invite him, again, comma, he'll be upset. We say, if you don't invite him, he'll be upset. And you see, because we are using the if clause first, we need to use a comma before the consequence. And uh, in here, the tense of the condition clause or the if clause is in present simple and the consequence we use will or in negative consequences won't if you don't invite him he'll be upset what is the difference between the, between this one and zero conditional it means you are having a party soon. This is a real situation. This is not imaginary or hypothetical. Or for example, you are not saying that generally if you don't invite him, he gets upset. We are talking about a real party, a real meeting, a real event, and a probable consequence for something that you may decide to do. And again, will be late if you don't hurry. And remember, in here, we are using the consequence first and then the condition or the if clause. So we don't need a comma here. Will be late, the consequence with will or won't, 
if you don't hurry it means this is a real situation we are going somewhere and a person is being slow so we are telling them please hurry up we are facing a real situation in here so we use first conditional okay one point about first conditional for the condition it means the condition clause or the if clause we can also use present perfect or present continuous it, it means we don't have to use present simple all the time in the first conditional for example we could say if he is driving this is in present continuous in the if clause comma i won't come with you the consequence with will or won't because this is first conditional another example if i finished comma present perfect i let you know will for the first conditional and remember just like zero conditional we could also use when instead of if when it is possible and when it make it makes sense we could use when i finished i'll let you know that is still a first conditional sentence okay another point and the last point about uh, first conditional sentences for the consequence we can also use can should may or imperative what does that mean it means instead of will we could use one of these if it makes sense in your sentence for example if you let me this is in present simple and this is a real situation comma i may be able be able to help you in in here we are using may because we are uh, expressing the probability of the situation not the certainty of the situation this is a still a first conditional sentence or another example if you feel bad present simple because this is a first conditional sentence comma you should talk to someone again we are using should instead of will because should makes more sense in here and not will and this is a still a first conditional sentence or we could also use can for example you could say if you miss the bus you can catch a taxi or you could use imperative if you don't feel all right talk to someone okay let's talk about second conditional sentences we use second conditionals to describe an imaginary situation what does that mean uh, example one we say what would you do if you won the lottery first let's take a look at the structure of a second conditional sentence again what would you do this is the consequence part and if you won the lottery and this is the if clause or the condition that's why we are not using a comma in here because we are using the condition second and the consequence first what would you do and in the consequence in the second conditional we use a would if you won the lottery and in the condition clause this is past simple we call it we call it fake past there is a reason we call it fake past because this is not really past we are still talking about the present or the future we are not talking about the past it means if right now or for example um, at some time in the future I won the lottery uh, or you won the lottery what would you do that is why actually second conditional uh, might be the trickiest conditional for English learners just because of this fake past in here because we are using past simple but we are actually talking about the present or the future another example in here we are using the if condition first if I had a car again this is in past simple and it indicates that this is a second conditional comma I'd go on a road trip it is very common to use the contracted form of would with the subject I would we write I'd another example if she were here there is an important point in here for we say I was he was she was and it was generally in a statement but in conditionals if you are using these subjects he she and it and I in the condition clause or the if clause uh, it is it is better it is more appropriate to use where and not was when you're speaking like in colloquial English in spoken English or casually you can say if she was here but especially when you're writing try to avoid that and always use were if she were here 
comma, again in past simple, so this is a second conditional, she'd, it means she would, she'd know what to do, and know is your main verb in here, because would is a modal verb, and after modal verbs we always use the base form of the main verb. And let me explain something about uh, the meaning of the second conditional again. When we say, what would you do if you won the lottery, this is a completely imaginary situation. We are not talking about a fact in here, we are talking about a probability, like a very distant possibility, which is almost impossible. It says, if I had a better car, it means I have a bad car. That's why we call it an imaginary situation. And in here, if she were here, it means she is not here. That is why this is an imaginary or a hypothetical situation, which we use in second conditional sentences. Okay, the last points before we get to the exercises. One point about the second conditional. We can use could or might instead of would in the second conditional. If you helped me, this is in past simple. Look, again, I remind you, this is in past simple. But actually, we are talking about the present or the future. And this is an imaginary situation. It means we are doing something and we need some help. And somebody is not helping us. That is why we say, if you helped me, um, this, uh, it's because that person is not helping us. And we are talking about the, right now, the current situation. I might succeed instead of would. We could also use could or might. Uh, and the last point, this is not about the second conditional, this is about all conditionals. Sometimes, um, instead of if the condition um, word, we could use unless, but with a difference. Unless means if not. Example, these two sentences, these two conditionals mean the same. We have, if you tell me the truth, I can help you. This could be considered a first conditional or a zero conditional, it depends. Uh, if we are dealing with a real situation or we are generally talking about something. If you tell me the truth, I can help you. Now, we want to use unless instead of if. We need to make one of the sentences negative if it is positive. And if it is positive, if it, if it is uh, negative, we need to make it positive. It means we need to uh, do the opposite. For example, if you tell me the truth, this is a positive sentence, this is the if clause, I can help you. This is a still a positive sentence of the consequence. But instead of if, we are using unless. Unless you tell me the truth. Again, we haven't changed, you know, sometimes we need to change the condition, sometimes we need to change the consequence. Uh, it just needs to make sense, so it is your decision. If it makes sense to you, you can change, you can change whichever you want. Unless you tell me the truth, we haven't changed this one, so definitely we need to change the consequence. I can help you, we need to write I can't help you, because we are, we are using unless instead of if. Okay, uh, let's do some exercises. These exercises are again from the book Intermediate Language Practice. Let's begin. Okay, let's begin with the exercises. The first exercise, underline the correct word or phrase in each sentence. You can pause the video and do the exercises, then we can check them together. So, A. If we are late for class, our teacher will be angry. Uh, this is a first conditional, and it means we are dealing with a real situation in here. So the condition, or the if clause, is in present simple, and the consequence is in future simple. B. If we lived on another planet, uh, it is obvious that this one is a second conditional because the if clause or the condition is in past simple. So we could conclude that the consequence must be with uh, would. Would see or we would see the earth in the sky. C. If we take, because we cannot use will in the condition. So if we take, and this is present simple, so we can tell the consequence is in uh, future simple, because this is a first conditional. D. If we won't, again, we don't use will or won't in the condition. If we don't hurry, this is uh, the condition in present simple. So, we'll be late. We, we are um, dealing with a real situation here, so we use second conditional. E. If we 
are, we cannot say if we are birds because we are not birds. So if we were birds, this is a second conditional um, about an imaginary situation. We would be able, as it is in second conditional, we would be able to fly. F. Again, if you, we don't use would in uh, the condition uh, clause, so the answer is if you don't wear, this is in present simple, and uh, this is a real situation, you'll feel cold, because this is a first conditional. G. If I studied, because we cannot say if I will study, this is the if clause. So if I studied, this is in past simple, so we conclude the, the consequence uh, should, be in, should be with would. I would get better marks, because this is an imaginary situation. It says if I studied uh, harder, it means uh, I'm not studying hard enough. H. If I had a motorbike or if I have a motorbike, I rode or uh, I'd ride it to school. Uh, we can uh, see the consequence, we can start from the consequence, because we cannot use past simple in the consequence. So this should be the answer. I'd ride to school. So we conclude that. This is an imaginary situation. This is the second conditional. So the condition is if I had a motorbike. It means I don't have a motorbike. I'm just dreaming about it. I. If you will, again, we don't use will in the condition clause. So if you lend me your bike, this is in present simple. So this must be a first conditional sentence. So I'll let you borrow my skateboard. J. If I have lots of money, this doesn't make sense. Uh, this is obviously an imaginary situation. If I had lots of money, past simple, so the consequence will be with would plus the base form of the main verb. I'd give some to all my friends. All right. Let's take a look at this exercise. Complete the sentence uh, for each situation using the verbs given. Let's start with A. You are standing too close to the edge of a swimming pool. You're wearing all your clothes, not a swimming costume. So this is a real situation. Uh, a friend says, if you fall in, because uh, in real situations we use first conditional, and then your clothes will get wet. B. You're sitting in the classroom on a hot day. You're daydreaming about going to the beach. This is obviously an imaginary or a hypothetical situation uh, in which we use the second conditional. You think, if today were a holiday, again, I explained it um, in the lesson, for he, she, it, and I, uh, in uh, the second conditional, we use where. We don't use was. We do use was, but it is more appropriate to use where, especially in uh, formal contexts. If today were a holiday, which is not, I would go to the beach. Second conditional. C. You can't answer a question in your English book. You ask a friend to help, but she doesn't know the answer. She says, if I knew the answer, because that person, she, doesn't know the answer. So we need to use an imaginary um, situation sentence. Or the second conditional. If I knew the answer, I'd tell you. D. Uh, you're walking towards the bus stop with a friend. The bus arrives. It is far away. But there is a chance. It means there is a chance to still catch the bus. You say, if we run, because you're, uh, this is a real situation, if we run, we will catch it. E. You're planning to go to the beach with some friends. You're not sure about the weather, because it sometimes rains. Uh, again, this is a real situation. You're planning for a beach day. You arrange to meet tomorrow afternoon and say, if it rains, we will go to the cinema instead. F. You're very busy and have lots of, lots of schoolwork, and you also play in two teams. A friend asks you to join a computer lab. You say, if I had more free time, it means I don't have more free time. This is an imaginary situation, so second conditional. I would or I'd join the club, but now I'm too busy. Next exercise. Complete each sentence as either a first conditional or a second conditional sentence using the verb in brackets. Okay, number one. If I... Let's read the rest of the sentence. If I arms five meters long. So this is obviously an imaginary situation. So, second conditional. If I had arms five meters long and the consequence would, 
I'd or I would be able to reach the top of that shelf. Two, don't worry, you've just got a cold. Uh, this is a real situation, so first conditional. If you take an aspirin, you'll feel better. Three, vegetarians believe that if nobody, we cannot say nobody, if nobody uh, eats meat because you know that is not uh, the current situation in the world right now a lot of people eat meat so this is obviously an imaginary situation so second conditional um, if nobody ate meat everybody would live longer and they are not that wrong to be honest number four if I a famous rock star again it's this is up to you if you are on the verge of becoming a famous rock star or you are still very young and still have all your life ahead of you to become someday a famous rock star you could use the first conditional uh, but uh, this is apparently an imaginary situation so if i became a famous rock star i would or i'd buy my parents my parents an, an enormous an enormous house five it says no parking Again, a real situation. It means we are going to uh, our car, park our car somewhere um, where it says no parking. If you leave the car here, the police will give you a parking fine. It says it's not far. So, uh, again, this is a real situation. So, if you follow this path, you'll arrive to this station. Number seven. If people, again, imaginary situation, use the bikes instead of cars, there, would, there wouldn't be so much pollution second conditional number eight actually uh, brutus is a very friendly dog a real situation first conditional if you touch him he won't bite you number nine uh, second this is a first conditional a real situation if you leave your books on the desk i will or i'll give them back to you at the end of the lesson number ten uh, so if you then we have own a pet tiger this is obviously an imaginary situation if you owned second conditional uh, a pet tiger your friends wouldn't visit you i would say if you had or if you owned a pet tiger um, why would you need any friends anymore all right guys thank you for watching another english grammar with max i hope you enjoyed it if so please don't forget to like our videos and uh, subscribe to our channel and if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section see you next week